Good morning, everyone. Let's stand together. Welcome to New Life. We're glad you're here on this Sunday morning. Today is a wonderful day to be in church. It's a wonderful day to be in the presence of the Lord. I wish you would take just a moment and shake somebody's hand around where you are standing right now and welcome them to the house of the Lord. Welcome them into the sanctuary right now. Amen. Let them know you're happy they're coming to new life and worshiping with you. Praise God. We are welcoming you into the presence of the Lord today. Allow me to use God's own word to declare over this house this morning. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. Let the children be joyful in their King. Let them praise His name. Let them sing praises to Him. For the Lord takes pleasure in His people. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Praise the Lord. Did you come with a praise in your spirit today? Did you come with a shout in your voice today? Come on, let everything praise the Lord right now. All across this house, let's give him praise and welcome Jesus in this house. In the name of Jesus, we welcome you, Lord. Fill this place with your glory today. Let your power be seen among us today. Let everything point to you, O oh God. May you be lifted high in this sanctuary. We praise you. We glorify you, Jesus. This service is yours in Jesus' name. And everyone say, in the name of Jesus. If you are a member or a guest, we're, wel we're welcoming you. We're thankful that you're here. I wish you would just look at someone and ask them this question. Did you bring a praise with you today? Come on, did you bring a praise with you today? Look at him and say, join the choir with me right now. Let's lift up our voice and sing to the Lord. He is worthy of all of our praise. Let's magnify him today. There is no shadow that has ever overcome your life. your might you've always been with us every battle you've already won or we've already won and there is no weapon that has ever left a mark on you and there is no army with the power to conquer truth you've always It's possible There 
despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break their Sing all of my fear. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break their Sing of the Lord. Amen. It is so good to have you worshiping with us today. Shake one more person's hand and you may be seated. God bless you. Thank you so much for being at New Life today. And I look across this room and I see a lot of new faces. We welcome all of our guests that are at New Life with us today. On behalf of our entire church, we're honored to have you worshiping with us today. We hope this is not the last time that we will see you. If you are here for the very first time, we have a gift for you in the atrium on your way out. We would love to give that to you. Shake your hand again and thank you again for worshiping with us today. Amen. And it is so, so good to see Debbie Tracy back at church today. Sister Debbie, it's great to have you back. Amen. We have been praying for her and believing the Lord to touch her, and God is doing that, and we are thankful. We welcome Sister Debbie back. Uh, this is a great church, and we are committed as a church to sharing the hope of the gospel and for growing believers and for strengthening families. And if you're new to our assembly, we'd love to talk to you about that. We have a great way that you can connect to this church if you're new. And it is a wonderful opportunity next Sunday morning after our morning service. It's called Pastor's Chat. And it's exactly that. You get to chat with all of us and get to just have a good lunch and meet some of our leaders. And so if you're new to our church, over the last several weeks, we would love to share a meal with you. There's no cost for that. 
and we would love to just have you join us. That will be next Sunday morning right across the alleyway uh, in our uh, chapel. And we really encourage you to be a part of that. For all of our members, just a reminder that we have our members business meeting on Wednesday, April the 17th. So one week from this Wednesday, and that will be at 615. I also see brother and sister Tier here today, our missionaries to Slovakia and Serbia, members of this congregation. Brother and sister Tier, we're so glad you're here today. Amen. We welcome you back home. Now, how many of you like good news? Are you ready for some good news? And this good news has nothing to do with an eclipse. I know tomorrow's going to be a neat day, but I've got some good news today. Uh, just a couple of days ago, we hosted in the state of Arkansas a great service called Unshackled. And our Celebrate Recovery ministry here in Cabot at the church came and supported that event along with many people from our church. And I'm happy to tell you there was a great crowd that gathered in Benton on Friday night. Some of you were a part of that. And the Lord poured out His Spirit in a marvelous way. And let me just tell you a few highlights of what happened. I got a word today from Brother Nick Mahaney, who is an evangelist and was helping oversee that. He said, Brother Gaddy, I just have to tell you, one of my probation officers when I was incarcerated, when I was incarcerated years ago, one of my probation officers from drug court came, and I got to pray her through to the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues. He said her entire family was water baptized Friday night in the name of Jesus. There were 21 people water baptized Friday night in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise God. Come on, I think we ought to praise God for that. That's what the church is all about. Praise God. Amen. I also took note that there was an empty wheelchair up by the altar. Someone came in in a wheelchair and walked out of that service. So the healing power of God was evident in such a marvelous, marvelous way. So God is doing great things in Arkansas, but God is also doing marvelous things here at New Life. And I want the following people to join me up here on the platform. Just come quickly. Wayne Lawrence... Heath Heineman, Killian Heineman, Samuel Jones, Landon Ridings, and Caden Sword. If they would come quickly, that they're coming from all over the sanctuary. And I told uh, our, our team this morning, I took note that everybody I'm going to give a baptism certificate is a guy. <laughs> there is a great move of the Lord. Uh, Margie... Swafford is here, and she was baptized Wednesday night in the name of Jesus. We're rejoicing with Margie over that. But last Sunday morning, I mentioned that Wayne is, is my former neighbor where we lived on South Hills. We were neighbors a long time ago, and he came to this church a few months ago, and we got reacquainted. And Wayne was baptized in Jesus' name on Easter Sunday, last Sunday morning. And when I, when I baptized Wayne at the close of our second service, I, I felt the Lord say, just stay right here for a minute. So I'm standing right over there, and I felt the Lord just say, just stay right here, as if something else is going to happen. And I just made a simple plea. I said, would anybody else like to be water baptized in the name of Jesus? And Heath, right here, was here for the first time last Sunday morning on Easter Sunday. He said, I'm ready to be baptized in Jesus' name. Killian, his son, said, I'm ready to be baptized in Jesus' name. Samuel Jones, wave at me, Samuel, was baptized in Jesus' name. Landon was baptized in Jesus' name. Caden was baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, New Life Church. God is working. God is working. Amen. I'm happy to give that to you, Caden. I'm happy to give that to you, Wayne. Heath, I'm happy for you, my friend. Killian, congratulations. Samuel, congratulations. And Landon, give them another great hand clap of appreciation. God's doing great things. Congratulations to every one of you. Bless you. You guys can be seated. Congratulations. Happy for you. 
And by the way, we got two more to baptize at the close of this service today. So the Lord's doing marvelous things in our midst. Hey, man, you may be seated. Christian Fertig's going to come and point us toward the mission field, and we're going to give you an opportunity to give today. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, New Life Church, for continuing to spread your arms and hearts of love around the world through your prayers and financial support. Go with me today to visit four of our partners in missions. In Sao Paulo, Brazil, Aaron and Tiffany Anderson asked for continued prayer for their country, that many more will be baptized in Jesus' name, just like this young man. Last month, they blessed the country of Ecuador by teaching in the GATCH training seminar for 99 teachers from throughout the country. Stephen and Lynette O'Donnell posted this recent service report over 500 in attendance, 10 baptized in Jesus' name, and three received the gift of the Holy Ghost. To God be the glory now and forever. Missionary Peter Gration sent photos of two of their outreach teams moving the gospel in Vanatu, Tana and Epi, all are Bible school graduates taking the truths that they have studied to others. Pentecost all over again. Missionary Steve and Cherry Smith are rejoicing as 120 received the gift of the Holy Ghost in March and 22 were baptized in Jesus' name. Doesn't this smile say it all? Thank you, Jesus. In the foyer, you can find Sister Celinda Nickel. She has the list of missionaries we support. Please, take, uh, please ask them and thank you. Thank you, Christian. Let's everybody stand together. We have such a great opportunity today to give, to support, as Christian has said, the work of God around the world. And here's the great thing, New Life. Those successes are our successes. Those victories are our victories because we support them financially and in prayer. So we want to give you an opportunity to give today to continue what God is doing around the world. I'm going to have our ushers join me up here at the front. During our, our segment of the service right that's happening right now, we're going to give you an opportunity to do a couple of things. You'll see on the screen ways that you can give digitally and you can be a part of this offering if you so choose. We have just a great number of people that give of the first 10% of their income. It's tithing. It's a biblical practice. And thank you for those of you that are so faithful in that. You can, in just a moment, bring your tithing. You can bring your offerings. If you have cash or checks, the ushers can help you up here. And then digitally you can give as is shown on the screen. But the second thing we're going to do is we're going to let you connect with people. I had someone tell me one time, man, Pastor, there's two things I notice about the church in Cabot. You all stand up a lot and you all shake hands a lot. Well, yes, we're proving both of those right now. So let's give faithfully to the Lord and to move the gospel around the world. Let's thank the Lord for his goodness in our life. Lord, you've blessed us with jobs. You've blessed us with finance, Lord. But you've done more than bless us so we can hoard those blessings. You've blessed us so we can give to others. And I thank you for the impact of new life literally around the world. We rejoice this morning, Lord, in every great report that we're getting from different continents, different areas of influence around our globe. Pour your blessing out on our missionaries today. Pour your favor out on our missionary partners today. Guide them, direct them, give them strategic conversations and open doors of ministry, I pray. Help us as a church to reach into unreached people groups, Lord, and see the hand of God ministering, Lord, on our behalf. Lord, for that, we're going to thank you and give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are standing around some of the greatest looking people in the world. So why don't you tell them that as we give and as we connect today. God bless you. Let's come and let's greet one another in the name of the Lord Jesus.
Good morning. Welcome to New Life. If this is your first time here, you've made our day by being here. We have a special gift for you at the Connect Center in the atrium. If you are joining us online, we say welcome. We hope today's service blesses you wherever you are joining us. If you have kids here with you in service, we would like to let you know we have a nursery available for ages six weeks to two years. Children ages three and four will be here in the sanctuary during worship. During the preaching time, we have a special class just for them. If you need any help checking your children in, please feel free to visit us at the Connect Center. If you're new to New Life and you want to learn more, we've got a special gathering for you. On April 14th, after worship service, we are hosting a special lunch for anyone interested in New Life. We'd love for you to join us then. The next thing we want to let you know about is the Church Center app. This app is the best way to find out what's going on at New Life. You can see a full calendar of events, connect with groups, and even give online. This app is available for download on Apple and Android devices. We are about to enter into a time of music and worship. You're going to see people clap their hands, sing out loud, and at whatever level you are comfortable, feel free to join in. Worship continues right now. Yeah. 
the Lord a little bit more right now. There's an anointing in this house. Those of you that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to pray in the Spirit right now. There's an anointing in this house right now. There's an anointing in this house right now. Hallelujah. Creative power of God is on display today. Creative anointing of the Spirit's on display today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Glory to your name, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We accept what you're doing in our bodies right now, Lord. We accept your miracle power on our minds and our thinking right now, Lord. We accept that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God's touching people all over this sanctuary right now. God's touching people all over this sanctuary right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There exists in the Word of God a recipe for the miraculous. And that is this. When the Word comes forth and it is mixed with our faith, the miraculous takes place. In the next few moments in this room, I feel very confident that the word is going to go forth. And I wonder how many here under the sound of my voice right now would make a commitment to say, I'm going to let my faith loose today. And I'm going to let my faith mix with that word of God to produce something marvelous and amazing. Praise God. Those of you that are up front, you can make your way back to where you were standing and let's everyone stand together if you are able to today. Amen. As we are preparing for the word of the Lord, I want to also thank very much those who are watching uh, our live web stream today. Literally people around the world worship with us every Sunday morning. And if you are watching, we would love, if it's possible, for you to get here sometime to worship God with us. We love that we can broadcast this service, but there's something about being live in the house that is the powerful, powerful experience. But we are very honored that you've come and worshiped with us today. Amen. During our preaching time, we also have a class for our three- and four-year-olds. So if you have children or grandchildren in those ages, you can step out into our East Hallway our staff will take good care teaching and you can slip back here uh, into the sanctuary. It is a distinct honor for us at New Life today to welcome the Bernards to Cabot and to really welcome them back to Cabot. Dr. David Bernard serves as the General Superintendent of the United Pentecostal Church International and uh, he is a tremendous leader. I know many of you are so familiar with his ministry and so many different platforms, but we're also very happy that his wife is here with us. She is such a dear friend to our family and to my wife, and Sister Connie Bernard is a genuine Christian lady, and we love her so very, very much. God's going to do some great things in the next few minutes. How many of you are ready for the word of the Lord today? Amen. You're ready for the word of the Lord? I wish you would give a great new life welcome to our general superintendent, Dr. David Bernard, as he comes to preach the word of the Lord. Bless you, Brother Bernard. Thank you. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful presence of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I'm asking my wife to come. She's going to sing, maybe testify or preach or do something like that. But uh, it's great to be in Cabot. I've been here several times for Purpose Institute and other things like that, but I believe this is the first time to preach here on a Sunday, and uh, thankful for the opportunity. We love and appreciate the Gaddies, appreciate his work here as pastor, also as district superintendent for Arkansas, and he's a member of the budget committee of the general board, so we get to work on a regular basis, and I'm thankful for his influence, and I'm thankful for the influence of this church. Uh, the UPCI, of which you are part uh, of the 210 nations of the world, we are now in at least 200. There are several more that we're working on. We'll probably be announcing this year 
It's exciting to see what God is doing. I mentioned at the district conference that the newest nations open, Sao Tome and Principe, which is an island nation in West Africa that speaks Portuguese. So we have a large Brazilian church of over 200,000 constituents. They sent a missionary from Brazil to Africa and yeah. opened the church there in partnership with our international global missions. They've already baptized, I think it is now 47 people in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we have, uh, we're getting close to probably 44,000 churches around the world, including our daughter works and preaching points. We just crossed over 5,000 in the U.S. and Canada, which is our home base. And so we're seeing progress where most other organizations are declining. We're growing. And it's because of churches just like your church, your prayers, your giving, your pastor's participation, other ministers, your participation in conferences and uh, our general conference, North American Youth Congress, district events, sectional events, because we're working together. We can fulfill our mission, which is the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. So we need you as a partner. And by God's grace, we're seeing worldwide revival. We'll continue to worship as my wife sings. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you this morning. And so great to see all of you here. We love the Gaddies. But more importantly, Jesus Christ is here. It's wonderful to walk in the door and feel a sweet presence. And anything can happen this morning. Do you believe that? For those of you that have been here for years, I'm thankful you're here. Those that this is your first time, I'm thankful to see you here too. And this song talks about, you know, we just they just sang that song about Jesus and his name. But do you know that he knows your name? He knows where you are. If this is your first time, you can just have comfort to know he knows you. He knows your name and he will always be with you. I have this morning amen would you stand one more time let's worship the lord again thank you lord we appreciate you thank you for your presence in this service today thank you lord for your plans for us amen amen remain standing just a moment as pastor gaddy said we like to stand and sit 
stand and sit. We want to get good exercise while we're in church. Amen. But we're standing for the word of the Lord. I'm reading from Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9 while you're standing. Deuteronomy 7, 9. This is just before the people of Israel were going into the promised land. God gave them this message through Moses. And here's what it said. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Notice this description of the true God. He is the faithful God. And that's what I'm preaching about today, the faithful God. You may be seated. Now in the text, as I just mentioned, Israel was getting ready to enter into the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised them. God knew his people would face the culture of that land. And the culture of ancient times was each land had its own God. Each mountain, each valley, each river. There were gods and goddesses of fertility. So if you wanted your crops to grow, your flocks and herds to multiply, you had to worship these gods and goddesses. And so there would be immense peer pressure and cultural pressure, social pressure, not unlike today, to conform to the worship around you. So to prevent that, God stated in the previous chapter, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And we still believe that today. There's only one true and living God. He's the only one we should serve, the one only one worthy of worship, the only one we should love. And so now in this chapter, we find a, a description to help us understand who is the true God. How do you know the true God in contrast to all these false gods? Well, one way you can know the true God, and he alone is the faithful God. The faithful God. All the other gods are fictitious, but... If you pray to them, they're not going to be faithful. But when you pray to the true God, you'll find out. You can trust in him because he is the faithful God. Amen. Now, what does it mean to be faithful? To be faithful means loyal, trustworthy, steadfast, true, dependable, someone you can safely put your faith in and you won't be disappointed. Someone you, that will keep his word. An unfaithful person, on the other hand, the book of Proverbs talks about as like a broken tooth or a foot out of joint. So think about that. So let's say I'm sitting in the chair, got a sprained ankle. You can't tell it. I can't tell it's not a problem. But when I stand up and put my weight on it, it fails. So the characteristic of unfaithful is this. When you don't need it, it's okay. It's only when you need it it's going to let you down. So you can have lots of friends. Some are not very faithful, but the unfaithful friend will actually show up most of the time. So when you're throwing the party, the unfaithful friend will be there. When you're buying lunch, the unfaithful friend will come. The only time the unfaithful friend won't come is when you need help. Just when you need it the most, he or she is nowhere to be found. And that's the way it is with the gods of the world. Now, you might say, Brother Bernard, here in Arkansas, we don't have a lot of Baal worshipers and, you know, worship of these ancient Canaanite gods. But don't kid yourself. The people of Arkansas have their gods, have their deities, the things, the philosophies and traditions and pleasures. And because whatever causes people not to serve the true God, that, in effect, has become their God. So a lot of people are too... Busy pursuing pleasure to come to church. Well, pleasure has become their God. A lot of people don't want to make a commitment or a sacrifice because they're pursuing money and material things. Some people don't want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ because of their tradition. Uh, some people rely on money. Uh, people think, you know, I, I've got a good job. I've got a career. And so I'm going to save up money. I've got a retirement plan. I've got an insurance plan. So whatever happens, I've got it covered. While it's good to plan, it's not good to trust in yourself instead of God. Because when you have that philosophy, then money has become your God. 
It's taken the place of the true God in your life. And here's the problem. All these God substitutes that I've mentioned, actually most of the time it looks like they're working. So most of the time, your pursuit of money, pursuit of pleasure, your philosophy, your tradition, hey, it's working out pretty good. I got a good life. My gods are blessing me. But the test of a god or a philosophy or a tradition is not when everything's going well. But what happens when the economy crashes? What happens when you lose your job? What happens when the doctor looks you in the eye and says, there's nothing more we can do? What happens when your marriage is falling apart? What happens when one of your kids is arrested or is on drugs? You know, what happens when crisis comes? What you're going to find is all those other gods are unfaithful. All the money in the bank cannot buy peace of mind. All the pursuit of pleasure cannot provide satisfaction for your soul. I'm here to tell you that all the other gods and philosophies and traditions that people depend on are ultimately unfaithful because when you need them the most, they can't help you. I'm preaching there's only one God who's faithful in the good times and the bad times. There's only one God who's faithful when you got lots of money and when you don't have any money. There's only one God who's faithful when you're sick or when you're healthy. There's only one God who can bring you through all the trials of this life. And most of all, there's only one God who can bring you into eternal life. He's known in the Old Testament as Jehovah, but he's been revealed in the New Testament as the Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the book of, book of Hebrews says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, forever. He is the faithful God. Oh, let's worship him right now. He's the faithful God. You can trust in him, the faithful God, the faithful God. Amen. Let me briefly share some ways in which our God is faithful. There's a well-known verse of Scripture in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. It says this, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So the first part of the verse says you must believe that God is. The only way we can be saved, the only way we can please God, the only way our lives will be blessed is through faith. It's not through our good works. We can't earn our salvation. We can't work our way to heaven. We can't say if I do a list of 10 different things, I deserve to go to heaven. No, we're saved by the grace of God. He finds us in our sins. When we repent of our sins, God changes our heart. When we're baptized in Jesus' name, that's not our work, that's God washing away our sins. That's why we always call on the name of Jesus because we know that Jesus is the only one who can save us and take away our sins. When we receive the Holy Ghost, that's God's Spirit. It's a gift. We don't deserve it, but we have to open our hearts in faith and trust in Him. We live for God every day, pursuing the life of holiness. That's not salvation by works. That's letting God change us from the inside out. He changes the way we think. He changes the way we act. He changes the way we talk. He changes the way we dress. He changes our relationships. He changes what we watch, what we read, what we search out on the Internet. Why? Because God's grace is working in us, molding us. And the only way that happens is we trust in God. So we're saved by faith. But the second part of the verse says you, you must believe that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So what that tells you, if you do have faith in God, you will not be disappointed. He will unfailingly hear and answer your cry because he's the faithful God. So when you trust in him, when you turn away from sin, you repent and you seek God. You have a guarantee that God will hear your cry. What that means is I don't care who you are. If you want to be saved, you can be saved. If you'd like to have your sins washed away today, you can have your sins washed away today. If you'd like to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can receive God's Spirit today. How can I be so sure? How can I guarantee it? Because God is faithful. I'm preaching the 
faithful God. He does what he says. He keeps his word. It doesn't matter who you are, black, white, brown, speak English, speak Spanish, rich, poor, educated, uneducated, whatever categories people might use. God doesn't worry about those categories. He looks for every single individual. I don't care what sin you committed. I don't care what lifestyle you're living. I don't care what habit or addiction you might have. If you're willing to turn to God, God will save you because he's the faithful God. I'm preaching that God is faithful to save. He wants to save you. And that's why the church has to be open to everyone. Every race, every color, every background. We must welcome people. You say, well, what if a same-sex couple walks in the church? What if a transgender person walks in the church? What do we do? I'll tell you what to do. Hello, my name is John. What's your name? Glad to have you in church today. We want everybody in the house of God. Sick people need a hospital. Sinners need the church. We want people to come to church. Because we believe God saves anybody, everybody. God loves anybody, everybody. And God has power not only to forgive, but to transform, to deliver. How can I be so sure? I'm preaching the faithful God. God is faithful to save. Now, my wife and I started church in Austin, Texas, 1992. We pastored there for 18 years until I was elected general superintendent. And uh, in the meantime, we'd started 16 daughter works in the Austin area, Central Texas area. And it's grown. Some have closed, more have opened it. There's more now. But uh, I can give you many testimonies. You know, Austin is not really, um, it's not a Bible Belt city. It's a pretty uh, liberal, pagan city. Only 10% of the population say they're evangelical Christians. So that's, you know, about how many go to church. And uh, otherwise, you have all kinds of backgrounds and over the years we saw people say from all walks of life about 30 nationalities we saw people who came received the holy ghost that they were from buddha they were buddhists i personally have had muslims i baptized them in jesus name laid hands on them watched them speak in tongues as they received the holy ghost uh, agnostics or atheists uh, we've seen uh, catholics come in the church get saved we've seen protestants come in the church get saved I've even seen Pentecostals come to church and get saved. So it can happen. Don't give up on your loved ones because God is faithful to save. So I could tell you so many testimonies, but one I'd like to share with you. It's a man, he was from New York named Tony. And if you're from New York, don't get offended here. But, you know, New Yorkers are kind of stereotypical, no nonsense to the point. This is the way it is. Well, he was like that. And uh, so anyway, when we built our first building, so we went through the first building. Of course, we were in a rented building for four years. Then we built our first building to seat 300. Then our second building to seat, what, about five or 600. And our third building, which it, Pastor Shaw is in now, uh, will seat 1,000. And it's, if you ever go to Austin, it's right there on the freeway, uh, North Mopac. And anyway, uh, so when we're building the first building, uh, I couldn't afford a contractor, so I served as the contractor, even though I didn't know what I was doing. So uh, I had to find good subcontractors who did know what they were doing and who would be honest and who would be reasonable. That's kind of hard to find, but anyway, we found Tony. He was a concrete man. He had been a rock and roll concert promoter, and he had finally settled down in Austin, got married. He started his business at a young age. He was a millionaire. He had a beautiful home, cars, boat, motorcycle. He had everything he wanted. So we hired him, and uh, our men started working alongside him. And, of course, they started talking to him about the Lord. Well, he wasn't interested in God. He didn't believe in God. He told me later he got mad at God for some reason. I don't know, even know what it was. And he shook his fist in the sky and said, God, if you're up there, kill me. Well, God didn't kill him. So Tony figured, you know, if I was God and somebody did that to me, I'd kill him. So there must not be a God up there. So that was his philosophy of life. So we didn't really get anywhere with him. Well, we're building phase two four years later. We need a concrete guy, so we try to get a hold of Tony. Well, we had a really hard time getting a hold of him because his business had gone bankrupt. His partner had 
had uh, messed up, and so he he lost everything, lost his home, cars, motorcycle, boat, and uh, he and his wife were getting a divorce. Um, he was on alcohol and drugs. This is all by his testimony. He couldn't sleep at night, so he's taking pills to make himself sleep, and he was sleeping like one or two hours at night. So physically, emotionally, spiritually, he was a wreck, and he needed a job. So we hired him as a foreman. He started working on our job site. Our men started talking to him about the Lord. You know, this time he was listening. You see, Tony didn't believe in God, but God believed in Tony. God's not looking for ways to send people to hell. God's looking for ways to reveal truth to people. And so some of the most unlikely people, you never know, God's working because God is faithful to save. And so they, our men started saying, Tony, if you want to get your life back together, you need God. If you want to get your marriage restored, if you want to be delivered from alcohol and drugs, if you want to be healed so you can sleep at night, if you want God to bless your, your business or you know, help you get a new business or help you get a good job, well, you need to pray. So I'm sitting in my office one morning. Somebody comes over from the job site next door, says, Pastor, Tony's over here on the job site repenting of his sins. He wants to get baptized in Jesus' name. I said, well, let's take a break from work. Let's baptize him in the name of Jesus Christ. So then we had a men's conference coming up. So our men started saying, now, Tony, if you haven't received the Holy Ghost by men's conference, you have to go. Everybody who goes to men's conference receives the Holy Ghost. You have to go. So he signed up. He went every service. He prayed, but he didn't receive the Holy Ghost. So the last service, Saturday, he comes up, he prays, he doesn't receive the Holy Ghost. So they're headed back to the hotel. He says, I thought you told me I'd receive the Holy Ghost. What's going on? He said, well, Tony, we haven't checked out yet. We're going to go back to the room, but we're going to have a prayer meeting in the hotel room, and we're not going to check out until you receive the Holy Ghost. So that afternoon, Tony received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Praise God. His wife, she was raised Jehovah's Witness with about five stepfathers. Her life was a big mess. She was baptized. She received the Spirit. Their marriage was restored. God blessed them with a new business, which even greater than ever before. He bought an airplane, shares in a helicopter, and uh, he would take me on trips. And uh, he helped with our building program, helped with Urshan College, Urshan Graduate School of Theology, because God is faithful to save. I don't care who you are or who, who you may be in contact with. Don't write people off. God has a plan. God has a purpose. Keep loving them. Keep praying for them. Keep living a godly life. Keep sharing your testimony because we're serving the faithful God. God is faithful to save. Amen. Let me hasten on. Not only is God faithful to save, but 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, just a few chapters later in the scripture. 1 John 1, 9, it says this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I need to make a, a, a rather shocking statement. So if you're a visitor or if you're watching online or you're new to the church, to be honest, probably Pastor Gaddy would not want me to say this, but it's too late. I'm going to say it anyway. Here's the shocking revelation. Sometimes Christians sin. Now, it's not supposed to happen. If you keep reading, 1 John 2, 1 says, I write these things that you sin not. We're supposed to live a holy life. We can live a holy life. We get up in the morning and say, Lord, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. I want to live for you today. When temptation comes, we resist the temptation. You think you could do that if you're full of the Holy Ghost? You think you could resist temptation one day? Yes, you could. So if you just live for God every day, you can live a holy life. But sometimes, you know, sin is not only robbing a bank or murdering somebody. It can also be in your heart. Your attitude, you don't even realize you have a bad attitude until maybe the preacher's preaching and then God reveals your pride or your prejudice or jealousy or strife, bitterness. 
It could be something you say. It could be something you don't do that God was prompting you to do. So sometimes as Christians, we realize, I sin. And the devil liked to beat us up and say, you're just a sinner. You're a hypocrite. You can't live for God. You just might as well quit the church. If you keep coming to church, you know, he'll say, the church too strict. You can't live that kind of life. But if you push it on past and keep coming, he doesn't give up. He says, you can't be a praise worshiper. You can't praise singer. You can't be a soul winner. You can't be a prayer warrior. God's not going to hear your prayers. You can't do anything for God because you're just a sinner. You're just a hypocrite. Now, don't get me wrong. If we're living in sin, we should feel guilty because the guilt motivates us to repent. But if we repent, we should not accept condemnation from the devil. We should accept that God has forgiven us. So the moment you realize I've done wrong, don't wait till next Sunday. Immediately go to God and say, Lord, forgive me. Change me. I don't want to live this way. Get back up and keep moving forward in holiness. Everyone can live a holy life like that. You say, well, how do I know? I, st I still feel bad. Well, did you confess it to God? Did you repent? If so, you have the promise. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. That means regardless of what the devil is saying right now, regardless of what you're feeling right now, if you've given it to God, you have a guarantee. God keeps his word. God forgives. God restores. God will pick you up. God will help you keep moving forward because not only is God faithful to save you in the beginning, but God is faithful to restore. So whether it's the sin of a moment and you immediately repent, or whether you just kind of drifted for a few weeks and grown cold, or whether you just walked out on God, openly backslid for years. When you realize what you've done, and when you come back to God in humility and repentance, you'll find God is still there. He's faithful. He's ready to forgive. He's ready to restore. Because God is faithful to restore. You know, that means anybody can be saved. Anybody can live for God. With a God like that, you can live for God and you can be saved and you can have assurance of salvation because he's the faithful God. It's not because you're great. It's because God is great. So I told you about Tony. Now, he was addicted to alcohol and drugs. You could be saved in one day, but it takes time to change your life, doesn't it? Be Sometimes to be delivered from addictions or habits, it takes time to learn how to live a holy life. It doesn't happen overnight. It can take weeks, months. Some people struggle in certain ways for years. That's why we're patient with people, with new people. We don't try to condemn them, don't try to beat them up, but we try to encourage them through the Word and the Spirit and positive example. But we have to work with people. And so... Uh, some of our men made a commitment to Tony. They said, we're going to talk with you every day. And if you're going through a struggle, you call us anytime, day or night. We'll talk it out over the phone. We'll pray with you. If you need us to come where you are, we'll come where you are, and we'll pray until you have victory over whatever that temptation is. So for about one year, they made this covenant to work with Tony every day. That's discipleship. Well, sure enough, in that first year, Tony failed God. And he was so embarrassed and ashamed, he just stopped coming to church. I would call him, he wouldn't respond. I email him, he wouldn't respond. I tied to him up a letter sent in the mail, he wouldn't respond. His wife kept coming to church, but he wouldn't respond. He wouldn't come, he wouldn't return calls, he wouldn't do anything. So finally, one day, one Sunday, he hadn't come to church yet another Sunday. So I checked with his wife, made sure he was home. I went over to his house, knocked on the door. Invited myself in, sat down on the couch, and I said, Tony, God did a miracle of deliverance, but you're letting that miracle slip through your fingers. I said, you fell down, but God didn't fall down. God's still here. He loves you. The church loves you. Nobody's standing in judgment condemning you. We're all just wanting to see you again. We love you. We believe in you. I said, I need your commitment and we're, it was uh, like a Sunday or two before Easter, so we're having a little drama, that Easter drama that night. So I said, I need you to promise you'll come tonight. He told me later, he thought, well, 
just a drama. I guess that can't hurt. So he came. Of course, you know the rest of the story. God gloriously filled him and renewed him in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. That was, what, 2001. And from that time till this, Tony has been faithful to the church. He and his wife, she just texted us this past week. It was their spiritual anniversary of her receiving the Holy Ghost, thanking us for being there and talking about how their life has changed. God has blessed him even more than he was ever blessed financially before. And, and Tony's an ordained minister of the United Pentecostal Church International. God is faithful to restore. Okay, one more verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Now, I've got another shocking revelation. Brother Gaddy's probably wondering, why did I bring him here? But, but Brother Gaddy, I have to explain to you. You know, I go around to all the churches just checking on the churches, checking on the preachers. And it's, uh, uh, the last time I was here, you didn't have this building. So y'all have done great things. I'm so excited about the progress of your church. But I just make sure that pastors are working full time, that they're not just slacking off. So, you know, I make these statements. So if... You know, if it disturbs you, my wife and I will be flying out this afternoon, so we will not be available for counseling. But Pastor Gaddy will be available for counseling. <laughs> I'm just making sure. Yeah. Okay. Here's my shocking statement. Sometimes Christians have trials. Now, if you're new to church, we didn't tell you that. What you heard is it's joy unspeakable, full of glory. It gets sweeter as the days go by. It's wonderful. It's amazing. It's the best life ever. And that's all true. But we didn't tell you, and you're going to have trials. But you will. And you say, well, I've never had a trial. Well, just keep living. But here's the promise, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. So, you know, in time of trial, don't get mad at God and blame God. It's not because you're Christian. It's because you're human. You live in a sinful world. You do not have a glorified body. You're going to have trials. Did you know your unsafe friends have trials? Did you know they get sick? They go to the hospital. They have loved ones passed away. They go through divorce. They get car wrecks. So don't blame God. It's just life. And sometimes the devil can attack and you take, try to take advantage of those things. But just realize that God is faithful. He said, whatever you go through, I will not allow something too great for you to bear. So the very fact that you're going through a trial is proof that you can get out of it. God didn't promise to stop all trials, but he promised to screen all trials. And if it's going to be too big for you, he's going to block it or he's going to cut it down to size. So by the time you go through it, you have an assurance that by his grace, you are going to make it. And sometimes God answers instantly the moment we pray. It's a miracle, and it's a testimony. Sometimes allow, God allows us to go through a few weeks, months, maybe even years waiting for the answer. But here's the thing. As the Apostle Paul prayed in 2 Corinthians 12, three different times he asked God to remove the trial. God didn't remove the trial, even though obviously Paul was a man of great faith and he was doing God's will. But for whatever reason, God didn't remove the trial, but God said, my grace is sufficient. So here's the promise. Whatever you're going through, God is faithful to sustain you during your trial, and God will be faithful to deliver you out of your trial. You say there's no way out. Well, God will make a way where there is no way. Just keep believing. When you don't know what else to do, keep doing what you know to do. Keep praying. Keep believing. Keep worshiping. Keep coming to church. 
in the time of trouble. Don't run away from God. Run to God. Don't run away from the church. Run to the church. Don't run away from the pastor. Run to the pastor because God has a plan. God's going to bring you through. God's going to bring you up. God's going to bring you out. God is faithful to sustain and deliver. You can count on him. Praise God. You may say, Brother Nor, but you don't know what I'm going through. I probably don't. You've never been through what I've been through. You're probably right. But, you know, I'm 67 years old. i got a few experiences of my own, too. But I'm not preaching because of my experience. I'm preaching the Word. It says God is faithful. You can count on it. You can depend on it. He will do it every time. There's no trial that catches him by surprise. There's no trial that he doesn't have the answer for. He will be faithful to sustain you during your trial. He will be faithful to deliver you out of your trial. He's the faithful God. I was preaching a couple years ago in Burnett, Texas, one of our former daughter works. And afterwards, a young man, oh, I say in his late 30s, maybe 40, young Hispanic man came up to me. He said, Brother Bernard, I want to share my testimony. I said, great. What is it? He said, well, I was raised by my grandmother. She practiced witchcraft, so I was raised in a home of witchcraft. He said, my dad was a drug dealer, so he's the one who introduced me to drugs. And I became, as a teenager, I became a drug dealer like him. I got caught, got arrested, got put in prison. What hope does somebody like that have? But there was a preacher that came to that prison. In the course of time, this young man was baptized in Jesus' name. He was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he was released from prison. Isn't that an amazing testimony of the grace of God? God is faithful to save. But he said, now that's not what I want to tell you about. What I want to tell you about, he says, something happened to me a month ago. He said, and he didn't explain the medical diagnosis. It sounded to me like maybe diabetes and insulin shock or whatever. But he said, a month ago, suddenly disease attacked my body, and one by one, my organs started shutting down. By the time they got me to the hospital, I was almost dead. I was in, a, in and out of a consciousness, barely hearing anything. And they talked that I would not survive that night. I was going to die that night. I slipped into a coma. But, of course, by this time, he, had, he was married, had children. They're all in church. He had started his ministry. And so he had a church that was praying for him. So while he was lying in, in the hospital that night, and the doctor said he wouldn't make it through the night, the church began to pray. And he woke up the next morning. He was still alive by the grace of God. The doctors expressed amazement that he had survived, but they said, you know, you're a very sick man. We're going to have to keep you in the hospital for a long time until we know you're out of danger. And really, after we release you from the hospital, you'll have to go to rehab because your, your body's going to have to be retrained to how to operate again. There's no way that you can instantly recover from this. But the church continued to pray. And by that weekend, he was so much better, they decided to release him from the hospital. And when they went to release him, he was so much better, he didn't need to go to rehab. They just sent him home, said, come back in one month. So this is about a month later, he's saying, I just went back to the doctor for my checkup. So the doctor's checking on me, going through all the tests, everything's just great. And the doctor says, wait a minute, something's wrong. He says, I got the wrong paperwork. They gave me the wrong paperwork. And so he was really upset, fussing. We'll have to stop this, you know, this examination until I can figure out what's going on and get the right paperwork. So finally, the young man said, well, doctor, what, what's the problem? He said, well, I, you know, it's not you. He said, well, what name is on that? The doctor read it. It was his name. He says, doctor, that is me. The doctor looked at him in amazement and said, I can't believe this because the man in this paperwork is severely ill, and it's going to take him months to recover from his illness. But I've just checked you out. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you. You're perfectly whole. You don't have to come back anymore. I'm releasing you. I'm saying God is faithful to sustain and deliver. He still heals. He still delivers. He still saves. We're serving the faithful God. Let's stand together right now. The faithful God is here. And uh, I don't know what your normal custom is. I, I'm pretty sure you have prayer. 
So why don't we do this as the musicians come and Pastor Gaddy can come any time. Why don't we just close our eyes for a moment. And I've preached a simple message, the faithful God. He's faithful to save. He's faithful to restore. He's faithful to sustain and deliver. And if you're watching online, you can, you can start praying right now. You can raise your hands and reach out to God. But if there's someone here today, help me, saints. Help me pray. If there's someone here today, and you're not really living for God, but you'd like to live for God, I want you to come to the front. I want you to kneel or stand. At any time, if you'd like to turn to someone nearby and say, I want to go up and pray, please come with me. If you'd like to invite someone to come with you, why don't you do that? Why don't you surrender your heart to Jesus Christ? Ask God to forgive you of your sins. Make a statement, a commitment that you want to live for him. That's what we call repentance. Please come right now. And maybe you've already done that, but if you've never received the Holy Spirit, you've never received the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, speaking miraculously in a language you never learned, God wants to fill you with his Spirit today. Would you come right now? Maybe you just got baptized, but you've never spoken in tongues. Today, God is going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And you're going to start raising your hands and praising him, speaking out, and God's going to change your language to another language as a confirmation that he's filled you with the Holy Ghost. I want you to come right now. God wants to fill some people with his Spirit today. If somebody you need renewing, Maybe you love the Lord, but for, you've gotten off track. You need a personal renewing. Why don't you come right now? Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need deliverance. Maybe you're burdened about a loved one that's not even here. If you'd like to come and receive a miracle, if you'd like to receive confirmation all across the building, why don't we pray? We still got plenty of time. Even if you don't come to the front, would you find a place to pray? Find someone to pray with. The faithful God is here right now. Let's call upon the Lord together. Let's reach out to the Lord. Come on. I need some more to come to the front. Let's seek after the Lord. Let's pray together. Let's see what God will do. The faithful God is here for us. Come on, come quickly right now. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in this house right now. Hallelujah. As you come, I wish you would just slip your hands up to the Lord and say, Lord, I yield myself to you right now. I give myself to you, Lord Jesus. Come on, it's as simple as that. Just opening up our mouth, opening up our hearts to the Lord right now. I need you, Lord. I cry out to you right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, I hear your voice today. I hear what you're saying to me right now, Lord. Restore in the name of Jesus. Restore in the name of Jesus. Save in the name of Jesus. Sustain and deliver in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for helping us pray, church family. Come on, let's just pray for those that are around us right now. This is why we feel the strength of the family of God right now. We feel the strength of the family of God praying together. Praying together, believing together. Praise God in the name of Jesus. I open up my spirit to you right now, Lord. I open up my heart and my voice to you right now. Every part of me is yours, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Come on, if you need the Lord to forgive you, repent right now. Tell him that right now. Forgive me, Lord. Let me start again right now, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry for how I've lived. I need you. I need your path. I need your direction, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for hearing us, Lord. Thank you for responding to us right now, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. You hear the cry of people in this room. You hear the cry of people praying at home right now. Your ear isn't heavy that you can't hear, Lord. Your arm is not short that you can't save, Lord. You are a faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We cry out to you, Lord. We cry out to you, Lord. We cry out to you, Lord. Lord. Praise God. Oh, yes, you're faithful, Lord. Your name is faithful. You'll be. Faithful Lord, your name is faithful. You're my Savior, Lord. Hallelujah! Thank you for being a restoring God. Oh, sing it again now. Oh, yes, Lord, your name is faithful. talk to us just for a minute. Everybody look right up here. I feel just an unction in the Spirit of God right now. If you are here and you have served the Lord, or maybe you are serving the Lord right now, but there is something inside of you that longs for a fresh fire in your spirit, a fresh blessing on your life. Doesn't mean that you're horrible, you're backslidden, but you need a fresh touch of the Lord today. And I believe the Lord's speaking to people right now. I feel this very strongly in the Spirit of God. Teenagers, adults, elders, preachers, you just need a fresh touch of the Lord today. If that's you, can I ask you to come quickly and just stand right here in the middle of this altar area. We're going to pray for you today. We're going to pray right now. And I believe a God who is faithful is going to let there come a fresh anointing on you. Come on, I want you to come quickly. Just come right over here in the middle section. You need a fresh anointing, a fresh touch, a fresh blessing from the Lord. It's been a while since you were filled and thrilled with the presence of the Lord. We got several here who need a fresh touch of the Lord. Now, I need some of our, our saints of God, some of our, our, our folks who love the Lord going to help us pray. I want you to come and find somebody to just link up with right now. I'd like us all to pray together. We need men and women to help us pray right now. There's going to come an anointing in this altar right now. It's happening right now in this house. The Spirit of the Lord is moving in a marvelous way in this room right now. If you need that fresh touch, I wish you'd just slip your hands up to the Lord, just signifying openness to Him, openness to Him, hunger for Him. I need you, Lord. I'm crying out to you, Lord Jesus. Just lift up your voice to the Lord right now. Close those eyes. Lift up that voice. Say, God, I need you. I desire you, Lord. Come on. It's happening right now. It's happening right now in this house. There's coming a renewing in the name of Jesus. There's coming a refreshing in the name of Jesus. There's coming a filling in the name of Jesus. Come on, he's baptizing people with the Holy Ghost today. He's refreshing people in the Spirit right now. Hallelujah. He is faithful to restore. He is faithful to restore. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We know you're faithful, God. Your word declares it, Lord. Your truth is in your word. Praise God. Go ahead and speak that out to the Lord. Go ahead and declare that to the Lord right now. Oh, yes, Lord. We speak liberty in the name of Jesus. We speak freedom from condemnation in the name of Jesus. We speak victory, fresh touch in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Come on, those of you helping us pray, go ahead. Intercede with us right now. Stand in the gap with us in prayer right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing power, Lord. 
Thank you for your healing power, Lord. Thank you for your anointed ministry, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God, I receive everything you've got for me. Every touch you have for me, Lord. Every refreshing you have for me. I receive it right now, Lord. I open up to it right now. That's it. That's the Spirit of God touching us right now. That's the press of the Spirit in our lives right now. It's working. It's moving. It's ministering right now. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you for the fresh anointing, God. Thank you for the fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful, Lord. You are faithful, Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! If you are here right now and you need a healing in your body, you need a healing touch in your body, I wish you would step a little closer right now. I know there's people need a healing in your body. I, I, I believe that Bernard's ministered to the tears, but we want to pray for our missionary, Brother Tear. There's some heart situations he's dealing with, but the healer is faithful today. The healer is faithful today. There's going to be some people gather around these ones that are stepping up here. We're going to pray the prayer of faith over them. I need some of you that believe in the healing, faithful power of God to begin to lay your hands on these individuals and speak healing. We speak the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Come on, God's touching Brother John right now in the name of the Lord. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. We speak healing in the name of Jesus. We speak healing over Brother Tear in the name of the Lord. Heart muscle be healed in Jesus' name. Woo! Come on, the healer is faithful today. The healer is faithful today. Your name is healer. You are a healer to me. Be delivered in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We speak healing over Sister Margaret Harden in the name of Jesus. We speak healing over Dawn Harden in the name of Jesus. We speak healing over Brent Sharp in the name of Jesus. We speak your mighty healing, I pray, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, you're a faithful healer. You're a faithful great physician, Lord. I call you healer. Your name is healer. Oh, Kalamusha Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, your healing. Healer, you'll be. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. Your name is faithful. Faithful to me. Oh, faithful you are. Faithful you'll be. Oh, we sing it out as faith, Lord. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. You have been faithful to me. I call you faithful. Your name is faithful. Faithful you are and faithful you'll be. I call you righteous, your name is 
never been water baptized in the name of Jesus you've repented of your sins today's your day today's your day we've got robes we got towels you don't have to get your clothes wet we've got people gonna be baptized in Jesus name here in just a minute if you're ready to be baptized in water in the name of Jesus just step right over here to the side of the platform God's gonna wash sins away today he's faithful to remit sins He's faithful to wash sins away. God is faithful. God is faithful. We got people praying everywhere. Go ahead and keep praying. You're dismissed whenever you need to. Let's go armed with the word of the Lord today. Armed with the word of the Lord today. God is faithful. Praise God. Let's keep singing it. Let's go forth from this house rejoicing in the faithfulness of God. You want to be baptized. Come on. Today's your day. Today's your day. You are so faithful to me. I call you faithful. 